Alright, so today I'm back with yet another chapter review, and today we will go over chapter 257, which is insane, so be sure to stick to the end because you don't want to miss it. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking, and let's get right into the chapter. However, before that, please double check if you are subscribed to the channel, as you don't want to miss my chapter reviews. While you're already down there, you can always leave a like and a comment, and with that out of the way, let's finally get into it. Alright, so to start off chapter 257, let's read the text at the top to remember what happened in the last chapter. It says, The Ultra Sadist comes through with a killer cross, setting the stage for the protagonist to stamp his impact. It's time to show us your top performance egoist. And that's just about to happen as we get into the chapter and see Hiyori's killer cross approaching Isagi. The ball is coming, but Isagi has Chapa close to him. But I don't think Isagi cares about that so much as he looks at Hiyori and says that this is his top performance and that Isagi will take it from here. After that, we get an overview of the Isagi position, where we can see that he is in the midst of three PXG players. Normally you would get shut down here, but Isagi has locked in and is determined to deliver his own top performance. Does he have a plan to do that? Of course he has. He knows that it is two defenders who are in front of him. To get behind them, he does a sidestep into a diagonal sidestep to kind of throw them out of balance. This works because they aren't able to predict what Isagi is going to do, which lets him use his speed to slip in between the two defenders. You would think that Isagi gets a breather after that, but he really doesn't, as Shidu is right by his side and he is looking at Isagi as if Isagi were his prayer, even going as far as speaking in his and Charles's emoji language and saying a skull emoji. But just as Shidu thinks that he's got Isagi where he wants him to be, Isagi slips away from the ball and tells Shidu that he's got to do better than that if he wants to stop him. This of course throws Shidu off guard, because why would you willingly move away from the ball? Shidu's face turns into panic as he wonders what it is that he is up to, but it doesn't take long for him to find out, as he can feel someone behind him. It's Kunigami who uses his majestic legs to jump up into the sky and meet the ball in the air. He tells Isagi that this is for the stake that he owed Isagi and tells him to consider them even now, before deciding to just call him a piece of shit, just normal sportsmanship between the blue lock cast. Isagi is looking at Kunigami and says that it's right and that this is the ego that he wants to see from Kunigami as he heads the ball into the ground and makes it bounce over to Isagi who's going all in now. His black eyes are out and he has his iconic piece flying around him like a tornado. After Kunigami's header he falls down on the ground and leaves it up to Isagi to finish. Isagi says that until now Kunigami had refused to pass and only tried to score by himself which is why no one will predict that he will pass in this situation where he could have simply stolen the ball instead, making it a top performance combo that only they could have created. Now Isagi's light is beginning to shine as he says that he's managed to break through their defenses and says that the only thing left is the finish. But I think that we both know that this is blue lock and that it isn't going to go that smoothly and it turns out that it's true as a familiar face decides to pay Isagi a visit. It's Rin who comes behind him looking like he has been devoured by total darkness as he tells Isagi that it's too lukewarm. Isagi is in total shock as he couldn't have predicted that, and Rin then, with an angry face, tells Isagi not to forget about him. As I said before, Isagi is in shock and wonders how it was possible for Rin to catch up to him. But then, suddenly someone else comes into the picture, because of course, Isagi should have more trouble. However, this time it's his own teammate Kaiser who comes by. Kaiser has an immense aura around him and says that this is part 3 and calls it the Raider edition. After that, Isagi realizes that he really is fucked and that he wasn't even expecting Rin, but now that Kaiser is on top of that, he can't understand how it happened, but then he says that both of them only focused on Isagi's movements and nothing more. Kind of like what Baru did in the U20 match, where he became Isagi's shadow. Anyway, Isagi says that this explains how they were able to react to him so quickly concluding that instead of reading the game's flow and situation, they solely focused on plays that would allow them to destroy Isagi, calling it their top performance and saying that it is messed up and that there was no way that Isagi could have known that and predicted it. However, he has to throw those thoughts to the side, get back into the game, and make up a game plan. He desperately wonders what it is that he should do. He knows that he will reach the ball first, but then what? After that, we see what Rin and Kaiser are thinking. Rin wants Isagi to shoot the ball, and if he does, then Rin will destroy every single direct shot course Isagi comes up with. A bit rude if I'm honest. Kaiser on the other hand, wants Isagi to trap it, and if he does, Kaiser will steal it and score for himself. Isagi's pieces are working at full potential to figure out what to do. Should he just go for the shot and try to come up with a solution where Rin doesn't block it, 
or should he trap it and try to fool Kaiser somehow? But in the end, as the ball falls down on his foot, he realizes that none of that is good enough and that he needs to, in this extremely stressful moment, come up with a totally new attack pattern. The ball falls down to his foot, and just then, Isagi does a fake with his left foot, which puts Rin out of the picture, as he has no way of interfering. But that can't be said for Kaiser, as he says that Isagi will now trap it with his right, and that he has got him. But he couldn't be more wrong, as in mid-air, Isagi doesn't trap the ball, but instead decides to just gamble and shoot it with his right foot. He makes such an unpredictable and powerful shot, that even two Glocks decide to show up around him. Anyway, as he shot the ball, he said that this was his new top performance. Kaiser can't believe his eyes, and is amazed at how Isagi did a mid-air quick draw, and Rin is just as blown away as he can't believe Isagi's new ambidextrous direct shot. The shot from Isagi goes into the goal with ease, as there's nothing that could have stopped that shot. And then, as Isagi Yoichi has just given Bastard Munchen their first goal of this match, his pieces connect with each other, and he has just formed a new attacking pattern. By connecting the left direct shot with his right direct shot pieces, he's now formed the two-gun volley, and just look at him. His face has a determination which I have never seen before, and he's even got himself smoke coming off himself, as he has just scored what might be the best goal in this series so far. Because let's just talk about it and how impressive it was. He managed to right in that moment, come up with a totally new attacking pattern that had the power to stop both Kaiser and Rin in their tracks. Not to mention how cool he looks right here. I don't know what the author was smoking on when he drew this, but I'm going to have to get what he's taking because this is on a whole new level. But now I've been drooling over this goal for a minute, so I'm going to need to hear what you think about Isagi's new goal, and if you also think that this might be the best goal of the series. Anyway, let's calm down and leave that for a quick moment, as we find out what the next chapter is going to be called. The next chapter is going to be called Combine and Invent, a new weapon. I suspect that we will go a bit more in depth to how Isagi thought during this moment, and how he managed to come up with his new two gun volley. I suspect that he took some inspiration from Nagi with his fake volleys, but then just implemented it in his own way to make it fit his direct shot. But I really can't wait to see what he says in the next chapter, and also what the other player says, because they have to be as shocked as we are by this, especially Rin and Kaiser, so I really want to hear what they have to say about it. And I know that Isagi was the shining star off this goal, but we also gotta give credit to both Hiyori and Kunigami, who made this possible. Without Hiyori's killer cross, and Kunigami's change off heart, which made him pass Isagi, this wouldn't have been possible. So to conclude it, I want to say, that the three of them did an awesome job. Anyway, yeah, this is just my thoughts on it. And please leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments, as I love reading them. If you like Blue Lock and videos like this, then I would highly suggest you subscribe to this channel. And while you're at it, leave a comment and a like as it helps out with the algorithm a ton. And if you are curious to see another video of mine, then please watch the video that will be popping up on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!